Good evening. Welcome to the house of the Lord as we celebrate together and this Monday, Thursday, as we take a walk with Jesus to that Last Supper. We welcome you also if you're joining online and you'll want to have a, a cup of juice and a wafer uh, for the participation in Holy Communion. This begins uh, part of our journey. We began on Palm Sunday and then Monday, Thursday this evening and Good Friday tomorrow at noon and then at Easter Sunday, a 7 a.m. sunrise service and a 10 a.m. Uh, celebration with music. So we hope you will join us. Let us prepare our hearts for worship by standing and singing together when I survey the wondrous cross. May be seated. Our scripture reading this evening comes to us from the Gospel of John, John 13, verses 1 through 9 and 21 through 34. Hear now the word of God. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God so he got up from the meal. He took off his outer garment and wrapped a towel around his waist. 
After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. And he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. But Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Later, after he had said all of this, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, Very truly, I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him, and Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, Ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? And Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. And then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. And so Jesus told him, what you are about to do, do quickly. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the festival or to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out and it was night. And when he was gone, Jesus said, now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your presence. May my words become your message for each of us, your people. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The word Monday. I remember as a child hearing it was Monday, Thursday. And I thought to myself, it can't be Monday and Thursday at the same time. I thought there was a confusion. But Monday means mandate. It means commandment. It is from a Latin word that means to command or to authorize or to give a command. That night, Jesus commands us, do this in remembrance of me. And love one another as I have loved you. We are given food for the journey, and it is Christ himself. We love because he first loved us. We serve because he first served us. It's the reason for the towel and the basin to say the leader is the servant. We remember because to remember is to embody Jesus' identity, his message, his meaning, his ministry. Jesus revealed to us the ideal humanity, the person created in God's own image 
who has the faith and the obedience that is possible in every human life. Jesus will convince Peter to let him wash his feet. In fact, he says, wash me from head to toe if it means I am with you. He will also allow Judas to eat beside him. Judas, the one who will betray him. Jesus gives a seat at the sacred table to all who betray him, as well as those who follow him. In fact, Jesus says, do what you feel compelled to do. He knows that this is the crux of human history, the point of no return. Jesus knew his love would be risky and that he would endure excruciating pain. Jesus will endure what we fear, pain, suffering, abandonment, condemnation, denial, betrayal, even by those close to us. Three days from a garden where he anguished in prayer to a torment and a trial to the cross. This is Holy Week. This is our story in Jesus Christ. The miracle of deliverance will not come until Christ have, has given his all. You see, God's miracle broke into human history, but he paid for it dearly, not just with his love, but with his life. That night, Jesus would take what was called the Passover Seder meal and transform it into his last supper, into a supper we commemorate. Jesus would say those same elements that reminded them of the Passover lamb would become the elements of his sacrifice, of his blood, of his body. In Jesus, God's word comes alive. Knowledge about God can now be knowing God. The Bible became breathing wisdom in Jesus Christ. The law graduated and it became love. You see, God is beyond us and yet became one among us. That seeming distance became deliverance. Hosanna, hope. The people had shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna to the one who will save us. Hosanna to the son of David. And the truth of Jesus is a Hosanna hope. God did save us. God does deliver us. He is now the Passover lamb, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world and the cup of Elijah, the wine glass that was always set out at the Passover Seder and still is set out to this day for the Messiah. Jesus will take that cup and will say, this is my blood given for you. This covenant was prophesied in Jeremiah 30, 34, 31 through 34. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. It will not be like the covenant of old I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt. This is the covenant I will make with them. I will put my law in their mind, and I will write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. And they will all know me from the least to the greatest, for I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sin no more. Jesus came. The new covenant, the word of God in the flesh, 
his Monday mandate, do this in remembrance of me. During his life, Jesus had commands. Perhaps we only considered them to be teachings, but they are his commands to us. In Matthew 4, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Follow me, I will make you fishers of men. In Matthew 5, rejoice even when you are persecuted. Let your light shine so others will see your good work and glorify your Father in heaven. Honor God's law, I came not to destroy it, but to fulfill it. Be reconciled before you come to the altar. Keep your word, go the second mile, love your enemies, be perfect in love as your father is perfect. In Matthew 6, practice piety between you and God, not to flaunt it in front of others. Matthew 6, invest in a heavenly treasure, seek first the kingdom of God. In Matthew 7, do not judge, ask, seek, knock. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Beware, beware of the false prophets. In Matthew 9, pray for the laborers. Be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. In Matthew 20, fear not. I am with you. In Matthew 11, hear God's voice. Let the one who has ears hear. Honor your parents. Forgive one another. Love one another. Love God and your neighbor. Keep my commands. Watch and pray. On this night, do this in remembrance of me. Love one another, and this is the way they will know that you belong to me. Feed my sheep. Go and make disciples. Baptize them in the Father, the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You see, Jesus gave us an order for life, an authorization to act, a mandate, a command. And above all, love one another. As we celebrate this Monday, Thursday, may we take to heart and listen once again. This is the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sin. Amen. Amen. Our song of reflection is the old rugged cross.
tonight as we partake in Holy Communion, you did receive uh, the elements in a little baggie that you will be able to partake of uh, after we do the liturgy, and then you'll put it back in the bag, and there are receptacles as you leave the service tonight. Those who are partaking at home, if you'll get your elements ready as well. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we have confessed that we have loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right, a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread and he gave thanks to you. And he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you and given it to his disciples. He said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice and union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast together at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen.
the body of Jesus is given for you. The blood of Jesus Christ is shed for you. Let us pray. Gracious God, your anointed one on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us the pledge of eternal life. Lord, enable us in this journey of Holy Week to take true to heart his sacrifice, his obedience, his great love, which showed to us who you are, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three in one, love eternal, love divine. Come once more. Rekindle the flame in our hearts. Help us to recognize you in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And now together we sing the prayer that he taught us. Remain seated for our closing hymn, Amazing Grace, and at the end we will be stripping the altar. 